Okay, we're back looking at these DRZ400 forks now that I had a chance to clean them up. Uh, they're laid out here on the table pretty much uh, the way they go together. Um, here's the cartridge with the damping rod and rebound valve in the top. Um, the bottoming cone goes on the bottom of the cartridge, which then sits inside the fork leg. Here's the, uh, the rebound adjustment and the cap that goes on top of the damping rod that performs the adjustment. Here at the bottom of the fixed tube, actually it's not the fixed tube, it's the sliding tube, um, we have the bottom cap and the compression valve, which came out as one unit before, um, but they're actually separate parts. And then of course we have a spring and, and this cap, which you know, sits around this guy. So, uh, we already looked at the adjustments and how the rebound adjustment valves the flow between this hole and the end hole and the compression adjustment valves the flow between this hole and the end hole and in both cases it just bypasses um, the, the shim stack and the shim stacks look pretty much the same. Um, so we are going to adjust these shim stacks. I'm not going to um, I don't really know exactly what they need to be, and I don't know what they need to be for you, so we're not going to go into that, but I'm just going to tell you how we take them apart. The, the metal of the, the thread has been flared when these uh, forks are manufactured. And you can see on both of them, well you certainly see it on yours, but hope you can probably see it on mine, is that um, you can see the punch mark on the end of this. So in order to get these nuts off, without damaging anything we have to grind the um, we have to grind the uh, the end flush and that's good that's about all we need to do is just grind that rod flush with the nut to take the swage section off it We're going to grab a 17 millimeter wrench to hold this because, as I said, almost everything's a 17. That lets the nut come off pretty easily. And here you can see the shim stack. I'm just going to take all these parts off in order. First, there's going to be a series of these shims. Generally going from small to large as you go. Up the stack. Then you have a small shim, which is called a crossover shim. And then, in this case, you have three or four, I believe it's three in this case, um, more of the heavy shims. And the idea here is that the heavy shims bend down to let the oil flow by under mild compression. And then this crossover shim creates a gap that allows the shims to open and then when they flex far enough to cross the gap that's created by this shim, they start to touch these shims, which gives additional resistance to the bending of the shims. So you have low speed compression, and then you have high speed compression that kicks in, and this crossover shim is what separates those damping functions. On the other side of the, of the valve, you just have a check valve. And the idea here is that, remember this is a rebound adjustment, as the fork compresses, the oil can freely flow past this check valve to refill the, damp, the, uh, the upper part of the, of the cartridge. But then when it extends, when the, um, when the, when the forks extend and the damper rod withdraws back up to the high end of the cartridge, this check valve closes and forces all of the oil to flow past the shim stack. And that's how you get rebound damping out of this valve without a significant amount of compression damping. 
On the other end, you have the compression valve, which works pretty much the opposite way. Um, as you, as the damping rod is coming down and squeezing the oil in the bottom of the, uh, in the bottom of the cartridge, it is closing this valve, forcing the oil to squeeze out past these shims and then out the holes of the, uh, of the cartridge. So to adjust, it's the same deal here. If you want to adjust um, your shim stack here, you're going to grind this off and take this nut off, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, but this is, I, I believe, aluminum in this base, and you need to be more careful. And so our compression stack is pretty much just the same way, except the way we assemble it, it's upside down. I'm just going to keep it going this way. First we have all the check valve parts. And then we have the shim stack. And again, starting from the bottom. We have the taper stack of shims. Getting larger and larger. There's our crossover shim. And here are the big stacks, the big shims. Wow, five of them in this case that form the low speed compression damping. So I hope you can see that against the steel table. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, basically those are the parts. So at this point, you're gonna adjust these shims uh, to basically give it the damping that you're looking for. Um, if you want, uh, if you want more low speed rebound damping, for instance, you're going to go stiffer on this uh, stack of shims here, more high speed rebound damping, and honestly, I don't think anyone's really going to care so much about the rebound for these bikes, um, but you'd be affecting this part here. Uh, the stuff that you're mostly interested in here is compression, and it's the same deal. You have the low speed compression stack, crossover shim, and the high speed compression stack. So I will put those back together, um, but while I'm here, let's just take a look at the rest of the parts. The fork slider now is just a clean slider, and just so you see how it goes apart, uh, sorry, it goes back together, uh, the bottoming cone, whose function I described before, sits in here against this snap ring. Like so. The cartridge gets screwed into the, the inside of the bottoming cone. The end cap goes on from this side, so the cartridge and the end cap basically sandwich this, uh, this O-ring here, this snap ring, and that's what holds the bottom of the forks all together. Up at the top, the, uh, the damping rod comes out here, and this step in the damping rod bottoms out in the top of the fork. There's in the bottom, sorry, in the cartridge. There's actually a spring in here, which is your top out spring. So as this comes up, the forks extend and it bottoms out here. There's a spring in here that's keeping that from being a hard impact. Uh, while we're here, we'll talk about the wear part for just a moment. 
Obviously you have some O-rings. Every, every one of these caps uh, has an O-ring that's associated with it. You also have slider bushings. Now here's a slider bushing on the top of the cartridge. This isn't really all that functional. It doesn't uh, hold any oil back or anything. It just, the cartridge is riding inside the chrome tube and we see a little bit of wear on that. Now in this, these forks I expect to be taken apart several times for development, so I'm not gonna replace that one now, but if we did, obviously it's just, you know, you just spread this apart and ease the thing off. So you have a slider bushing up here. There's actually a little bushing in here that the damper rod rides in, which you can inspect and replace um, as you want. Inside the top of the outer tube, you have a slider bushing. And so obviously the wear surface for that is gonna be on the inside. This one looks super nice. Um, actually there is a, I can feel a scratch in it there. Again, I'm not gonna be, um, not gonna be worrying about that. Uh, I did see um, on another DRZ fork rebuild that the amount of wear that's shown on the non-sliding surface of these bushings gives you an indication of uh, when they need to be replaced. Uh, for the moment, I'm not gonna do anything again, but um, once everything is done, I'll probably just get a new set of bushings for it. And uh, as we saw when it came apart, there's a slider bushing here at the bottom of the fork. I popped it back on for some measurements, but same deal, that's that percentage of wear that that other video I saw was talking about, um, which should give you an idea of replacing it. I believe he said two thirds was a sort of the wear limit for the marks you see here. Not gonna replace it this time, but once everything is um, all said and done, I will. So, that's pretty much all there is to the forks. I'm gonna go ahead and put these shim stacks back together. It's just fiddly work. And then we'll go ahead and reassemble.